Hello, it's Scott Manley here. Now, if you'd been watching Space News Feeds last Friday, you would have seen this Russian EVA going on outside the International Space Station. They were outside to replace some hardware attached to an antenna, upgrade something that really apparently wasn't designed to be upgraded in space, but they did, and it did take them over eight hours. It basically became the longest EVA in Russian space history. Now, after they had removed the antenna, they were able to dispose of it. And it, basically in space, on the ISS, in many cases, they can literally throw old hardware overboard. Now, of course, they throw it relatively slowly, but in reality, of course, it's still moving at several miles per second. So yeah, this is the helmet camera of Alexander Mashurskin. And yeah, he threw it out the side. They throw the pieces retrograde so that they end up going into a slightly lower orbit where they will eventually burn up in the atmosphere. Apparently, some pretty large pieces of space junk have been jettisoned from the space station in this way, including a cooling unit, which was apparently the size of a refrigerator, appropriately enough. Now, of course, this space junk continues in its own orbit, and indeed, they will have their own tracking IDs in the Celestrack database. This particular object is number 43,203. And of course, not all pieces of debris lost from the space station are done so intentionally. On one mission, they were working with a grease gun to lubricate parts of the solar panels. And uh, yeah, the astronaut has an oops, butterfingers moment, puts the thing to one side, and uh, nope, it gets lost. It floated away into deep space, and of course, it too became part of the satellite tracking database, and its orbit was well enough determined that someone was actually able to get a picture of it as it flew overhead one day. Now, without the orbit being actively managed like that on the space station, which gets periodic reboosts to push it into a higher orbit, these objects will slowly experience the tenuous atmospheric drag at this 400 kilometer altitude and, and decay. This tool bag apparently lasted about nine months before it deorbited in a fireball over the Pacific. And very rarely there are actually legitimate payloads that are deployed by hand. There's this tiny CubeSat which was deployed by hand by a Russian cosmonaut. And during the Apollo program, a couple of satellites were deployed around the moon by hand. But the real reason I'm making this video is there was some sort of superb owl event, and somebody asked me, could you throw a satellite fast enough that it deorbited? Like, could a super strong athlete throw something off the back of the space station fast enough that it deorbits so that some other awesome athlete on the ground could then catch it? So, of course, I did the math. But it's much easier to look at the simulation of the math. This is Kerbal Space Program with the Realism Overhaul mod. This is a space station that is in a roughly 400 kilometer orbit, which is pretty close to what the space station is orbiting at. Now, I actually figured out that anything above about 90 meters per second delta V is what's needed to deorbit an object inside a single burn. You have to drop the periaps to about 80 kilometers so that it deorbits and doesn't fly back out for a few more orbits. So this little satellite here has 100 meters per second of delta V built into it. And yeah, you see that I've dropped the periapsis to 64 kilometers, which is of course enough for it to descend into the atmosphere and burn up. So the next question is, are there any sports where the balls are thrown at these kind of speeds? You just saw Scott Kelly catching a NFL football in space. Well, uh, in NFL, the fastest passes thrown are about 60 miles per hour. So that's just that's 96 kilometers per hour. That's far too slow. In soccer, really hard kicks can maybe get it up to 128. That is still too slow. How about some crazy fast balls in baseball? Well, fastest fast ball ever recorded was about 174 kilometers per hour. So that would still fall short of deorbiting. No, to get balls up to those speeds requires tools designed for the purpose. Tennis and squash still come in well below 300 kilometers per hour. Uh, high lie, which is apparently like the fastest sport or whatever, using these big crazy ass gauntlets, those can hit at up to 300 kilometers per hour. But the rather sleepy and boring old game of golf 
Yeah, a golf ball can be whacked at about 330 kilometers per hour, presumably by someone that doesn't actually care what direction it goes. And of course, there has been this amazing history of golf in space. On Apollo 14, Alan Shepard famously brought with him some golf balls and a head which he attached to one of the geology tools that they were using on the moon. So hitting a golf ball in a spacesuit was quite hard. He had to do it one-handed. Miles and miles and miles. Actually, apparently he was exaggerating a bit and it didn't go very far. Indeed, there are photos of the ball on the moon. You can see it sitting there just below that javelin, which was incidentally thrown by Edgar Mitchell, who wasn't about to let Alan Shepard have all the space sports fun on the moon. And in 2006, cosmonaut Michal Turin actually hit a golf ball from the International Space Station. But again, you'll notice it was a one-handed technique, not really amenable for putting a great deal of power into these shots. You see, a lot of these sports I've mentioned so far, a lot of the techniques involve exploiting gravity to help throw things harder, you know, put the, the force into these things. So the velocities I've talked about are for Earth-based players, so it'd be unlikely they could manage this in the zero-g environment of space. But oddly enough, it turns out that badminton might just make it possible. Now, it, of course, you, instead of using a ball, uses a shuttlecock. And the long, lightweight racket means that it's been possible to hit these things at over 400 kilometers per hour. But even more, watching these, the guy is in the air, which is literally the definition of zero gravity and free fall. So I'm not going to say that I would guarantee it's possible, but yeah, that seems like a pretty good contender for being able to deorbit something with human power alone. But how about someone that isn't a sports superstar? Could you deorbit something from the space station by hand? Well, it is theoretically possible to build a bow and arrow, and those could easily get up to 300 feet per second. So that would be in the ballpark. But yeah, other than that, if you really want to send stuff home, use rockets. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.